Hey, what's up? This is Adam with Mr. Horse. In this video, we will put our hands on the Essential Typography Pack in After Effects. There is a separate video for Premiere Pro that you can watch as well. I'll be working here with Animation Composer version 2. We are already working on a new version of Animation Composer. It will be similar to what you see in Premiere Pro, so it will get even better. In this tutorial, we are going to recreate following titles. Four line title made of two different titles. A combination of a title and a shape. An animated speech bubble with highlighted text. Animated callout that moves with the image. And combination of an icon and a title. Great, so let's start with the first one. This is a title made of two different titles. So, in Animation Composer, inside the folder Essential Typography, you have different folders. These are the different styles. If I click on this icon, it will bring up the preview grid. So, I can filter the folders, just like this. And then I can choose by clicking on an item. Here I can choose if I want to edit with In Animation, Out Animation, and also set the default duration. I'll leave this like it is and press add. Okay, I'll move it here so we can see. So now if I preview, you can see how it works already. Changing the timing of the animation is really easy. You can move the markers, for example, this way, I'll speed the in transition. And if I move it to the right, it will slow down. So if I want to change the duration, I can also move the out point of the layer and the out marker, and now the transition will last longer. You can move this layer around, rescale it, rotate it, and so on. I'll just duplicate the footage so we have something nice to work on. And let's customize it. I'll move this to the left, scale it down a little, and I'll open up the master properties. This is where you make the basic edits. First of all, let's change the colors to, let's say, dark red. And this one, this one could be white. And the yellow box. Ah, uh, let's pick it from the text. Okay. In most of the titles, you can rescale individual parts of the title. For example, this box the sliders are always on the top the sliders are divided into different categories you can see it by the name so for example the container is something that edits the container that's usually the box for example i can change the round corners i can change the opacity of the fill I can change the padding and so on. There are also sliders for corrections. These usually change the position or scale of stuff that's inside these boxes. For example, if you would change this font to some different font that would be, for example, too small or would be positioned a little bit on top, you can make the small adjustments here, for example, you can put it down here. I'll undo. So these master properties override and change what's inside of this composition. If I want, I can go into this composition and here you will see the original item. You can make changes here as well, but keep in mind that only those changes will show up, which are not overridden from outside. And from outside, I mean from here, from the master properties. Let's now change the text and the font. This is something you will usually do inside the composition. I'll select the three text layers and change the font to, let's say, Enter. I'll select the first layer, double click and start typing. I'll close this composition 
and here we are. You can also change the text from here. You need to select the composition, click the text, and type. But keep in mind that this is not overriding the master properties. This is actually changing the text inside of this composition. So keep in mind that if you duplicate this comp, move it here, and you change the text, it will change the text in both instances. I'll just undo this. If you want to duplicate and change the text, simply duplicate it, right click, select reveal layer source in project, duplicate this composition. Now having this layer selected and holding option on Mac or Alt on Windows, drag this on the timeline. This has replaced this composition with the new duplicate. And now, if I select it and change it, it changes only in this instance. This is one of the things that will improve with the new animation composer. Okay, I'll delete this layer and let's make some final adjustment to this. I want to reduce this space, so I will go to the position text 2, and this will move it with the mask. By the mask, I mean the mask that is masking this text. So let's go here. And now let's reduce this gap. It's position text three. And I will move it right there. Great, so let's check what we have. Nice. Let's go to the next example. So let's see this. This is a combination of a text and a shape. So let's first duplicate the footage. So we have stuff to work with. And this is just a text without the line. You see that there's nothing in it. So it's inside the text folder. I'll open it up. And there were three lines. Oh yeah, this is it. So I'll animate in, animate out. Keep the duration on two seconds. Here we go. I'll move it down here. And let's add the shape. Shape is something that we have included as a bonus. It's inside this extras folder, inside the shapes. So where is triangle? Okay, I'll add the triangle. I'll move it here. I can maybe a bit rotate it. Press R to reveal rotation. Rotate it this way. Put it behind the text. And I'll reveal the master properties and change the stroke. And I'll make it animate later. And there we go. That was pretty quick. Let's check the next example. This is a simple speech bubble. The cool thing about this is that there is a highlighted text. So this bubble looks a bit different than the original one because I have customized it in some way. So I'll start with duplicating the footage. And it was inside, I suppose, the text box and outline. So I'll open it up. It's inside the long text because there is a lot of text in the bubble. And I suppose it could be this one. And edit. So you can see this looks a bit different than what we had, but no worry, we will get it. So I'll open up the master properties. First of all, I'll edit the container, the bubble. So this is the container. I will make the edges round a little. And now I need to move this tip to the right. So tail position, 
goes to the right. If you want, you can also flip it horizontally. So that's actually what I'm going to do. I'll move it here. Rescale it a little. And let's change the colors. Right now, there is no fill because its opacity is set to zero. I'm going to turn it up a bit. It's set to black, but I like to keep it that way. And I'll change the stroke of the container to something light. And I'll change the highlight to something red. Now, what if I want to highlight something different? For example, Easy Ease. I go to this section called Highlight. By the way, you can turn it off just like that. And I will change the highlight text start. I can also change the number of characters that it highlights. Another cool thing is that if I want to change the text, I click into it and double click the text layer, it rescales automatically. This is really handy and it saves a lot of time. So let's check what we got here. The last little thing I'm gonna do is that I'm going to animate this. I press P to reveal the position, add keyframe, add another keyframe here by moving the layer and easy easing the keyframe and actually move this down. And here we go. Great, let's move on to the next one. This is something similar. This is a callout and it's tracking the face of this guy on the cup. So let's duplicate the layer. I'll reveal this and delete this tracker. Great. First I'll add the callout. I'm going to the, let's say the fill and callout. You can find these callouts also in the other styles. Callouts, callouts. I'll click this button to reveal the grid. And I think this will be okay. I'll edit. I'll move it here. And actually it's not really good. I'll move it here. Now we need to change the position of this tip. So I'll reveal the master properties and I'll change the position callout point. And I'll add it to his forehead. I'll change the color to white and I'll close the master properties. So let's now make it move with the image. I'll go to window and open up tracker. I'll select this layer and press track motion. Now I will set this to track some something like this. It should be a point that doesn't change much in the scene, like doesn't get blurred or stuff like that. And now I'll move the playhead to the beginning of the layer and I'll press play. Now it's tracking the footage. Okay, now I'll add a new null object. And change it like this. Here I will click the edit target and select the null object. Press OK. And then I'll hit apply. Set it to X and Y. And here you should be able to see the null object. Now if I parent this layer, under the null object, you can see it travels with the image. Okay, the next one. This one is a combination of an icon and a title. I'll duplicate the footage. So let's first add this title. So I'll go to text. It's two line. And I want both to animate from the bottom. So I'll select this one, even though the second tile is smaller. 
but I can change it. So I'll reveal the master properties and change the scale text to so it's much bigger. I'll change the color of the text too to something like this. And let's now add the icon. There are some titles with icons in folders called social media, but we want something different. There are separate solo icons included inside the extras. So you can use them in a combination with other items. So I'll move it up. I'll scale it up and even more I'll open the master properties and I will get rid of this red fill so I'll turn the opacity of the icon box to zero now when we preview this okay it's getting better and better I'll change the color and let's now change the icon. I'll double click to open the composition. So these icons are text. It's a special font called Font Awesome. If you need any help with this, here's a link to our help article. It contains the links to download this font. This is the website of Font Awesome. I have a filter that shows me only the free icons and I'm going to search for a bell. I'll click this icon and then I'll click this icon to copy it to my clipboard. Then in After Effects I'll double click the layer and press Command V. This may seem a little confusing because it seems like the icon disappeared, but that's not the case. You just need to choose the right font. So I'll select the layer again so I'm not editing the text. I'll go to font and search for Font Awesome. I'll choose from one of these three because it's not a brand. If there was, for example, a Visa icon or a Dribble or YouTube, I would stick with the brands. But now I'm going for a light, regular or solid. So I'll zoom so you can see better. And actually I'll change it to solid and I'm done. With the free version of Font Awesome, you may see different options here. There is more than a thousand free icons in the free version of Font Awesome, but if you want more icons, you can still purchase the pro version of Font Awesome. Okay, let's close this composition. Now it looks too big, so I'll scale it down. Let's change the text. I'll select the first layer, then the second layer. Close it. I'll collapse these layers. And let's preview what we have. Let's change the timing a little. The icon should be the last, so I'll move it this way. Maybe a bit less. Oh, now this text looks too big, so I'll just select this layer and scale the text to so it's smaller and scale the whole thing so it's bigger. Wonderful. There is one limitation though. Saving presets is not yet available in After Effects with Animation Composer version 2. It will be with Animation Composer 3. We are already working on it, like horses. And that's gonna be it. Thank you for watching and we hope that you will love this pack as much as we do. Yes.